With all of the will and more than enough skill, the Rangers answer the bell, and they answer the questions about their ability to forgive and forget. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside the Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valiquet. 5-2 Rangers, the final in Game 2. Hank, we have a series. It's tied at we 1. We definitely do. What a game. What a win. Uh, Pittsburgh, they came out hard in the third and really pushed for it. Igor stood on his head, made some huge saves. I mean, saves we've seen all year long, but this was a critical moment in this game, in the series, to really tie this up. And then kind of they weathered the storm and came back really nicely in the third. But what a great hockey game. It had a little bit of everything. You needed a response, right? You lose game one at home. You have to really respond in game two, and that's what it's all about. And Igor did not show any signs of fatigue. After 75 scoring chances Tuesday against the Penguins, no signs of fatigue, came up big throughout. I thought the core players for the Rangers, they were stronger than the core players for the Penguins. And that was key because this was a high event hockey game that went back and forth. Big shot totals, big chance totals both ways. At the end of the night, though, I think everybody's pretty happy. That was a commanding performance. Yeah, a three-goal win really belies the fact that it was a one-goal game headed to the third period. And for the first eight minutes or so, it was all Penguins and not only what Igor Shesterkin did in goal but then what the Rangers finally did in front of him to give themselves some breathing room was really what was most important and it really came ultimately from Artemi Panarin but in the culmination of a 61 second spurt inside the Penguin zone. You can see when you can see when Panarin has that focused intense look in his eyes and he plays a certain way and he's got body language. He gave up the puck on the first goal for the Penguins, which made it 1-1 from Gensel. And then it seemed to me that he wanted to take this game over. He was in on the forecheck right here, fast, but then possesses the puck. And he's making plays here himself to keep puck possession. Now, Pittsburgh's keeping him on the wall, but it's really important to just note that he's breathing life into the play, and everybody wants to get the puck back to him because he's the quarterback, he's the catalyst. He took two looks right there, and you can see Truba here on the right point at the bottom right corner of the screen. He was looking for him. He was looking for Truba, but he gets the benefit of the bounce off of the Pittsburgh defenders because they turn their skates towards the goalie to defend. And I hear it all the time, lucky bounce. No, he created that. He created that out of nothing, and he had really good intentions, and that's why he got the lucky break. It was such an important goal. Yep. You know, John, you mm -hmm. talked about the first, what, seven, eight minutes. The Penguins was all over the Rangers. Seven, eight shots to zero shots for the Rangers, and finally the Rangers had a good shift, and who comes up big? Panarin. And, and he's just so strong holding on to pucks there, and you saw... Latang tried to, to stop him uh, with a body check there, and he kind of got away from him. And, and that's the thing with, with Panarin. As soon as you give him a little space, that's when he becomes really dangerous because he sees the game so well. And so the Rangers had a 4-2 lead at that point, Panarin's 11th career playoff goal. Sometimes two-goal leads can be tricky and dangerous for the team that has it. But it took only a minute 47 for the Rangers to expand the lead on a great individual effort from a guy who was named third star and should have been Frank Vetrano. And one thing that was really clear to us, guys, was the Rangers were targeting the glove-hand side of Louis Domingue. Uh, two words, Louis Domingue, okay? <laughs> and we didn't get Domingue tonight, which is really good. But they were targeting it. They were looking for the glove side. He made a number of really big highlight reel saves with his glove in this game and and you got to keep in mind this guy catches with the other side you know he's got the glove on the right hand so it's typically a blocker side shot but Vetrano cuts around the D here and really from a low angle guys below yeah. the dot almost dead angle he's able to go far side and lefties really shouldn't have that kind of room which tells me that Louis Domingue was off angle on this one and out of position but it's, it's just one of those goals you need from a shooter and his intentions you're talking about Panarin's intentions to pass uh, Vetrano's looking shot all the time. He has such a good shot. It, it's hard, but it's also precise. Yeah. He knows where he wants to put it, and he puts it there. Not a lot of guys can do that under pressure, and he comes in, pretty tough angle. And you could tell on, on Deming, he was way off with his left foot, way out of the, the left post. But we've seen this since he joined the Rangers, mm -hmm. the type of goals he can score from angles where guys have a tough time scoring. But it, it's precision, and it's... It's hard. It's a, it's a very good goal scorer's shot yeah. that he 
that he has. And those goals actually allowed the Rangers to expand on their lead. But that never would have happened if Igor Shesterkin didn't do what he did in the first eight minutes of the third period. Nine shots on goal for the Penguins. Shesterkin stopped them all in that span, all 16 in the third period. And there's a reason why he was one of the three stars. You see, I, I thought he had the spatial awareness of a fighter pilot, being able to see everything around him because the chances that Pittsburgh did get, they were right at the net, but they were almost behind his sight of vision. So his field of vision, of course, is looking forward, but they're sneaking down behind him. And he really had a great peripheral, just like that, just to be able to get across. That's 30 seconds in to the third period on Malkin. So that's a huge save at a big time. Another one right here where Crosby, again, gets behind his forward view. And I thought the Pittsburgh Penguins, they definitely had their chances. And you needed an all-star Vesna-type performance from Shesterkin in third period. He delivered. When you talk about the Rangers core, I mean, it starts with him and the spine goes right up for the team. And it really did, I, I think, exude the confidence that the rest of the group needed for that belief. What I really like about his game, he's just so good at reading when to be aggressive towards the shooter and when to sit back. On that save on Malkin, if he takes a foot out and be more aggressive on the shooter, it's going to be very hard to make that save. But he, his awareness of what's going on around him, not just the puck shooter and, 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 and guys in front, but it's also the guys on the side. And when guys step in the slot, he analyzes how much he needs to come out and be aggressive. And it's a huge part of, of goaltending today of analyzing what's going on and how aggressive you can be because it will put you in a better position for that second and third play, and he does it really well. Igor Shesterkin has 118 saves in the first two games of the series. The series is now tied at one. 